So macronutrients are our main energy source of different foods. So you've got protein, fats, and carbs. And obviously, if you want to include fiber in that as well, that would probably tend to go under the, 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 the uh, carbohydrate uh, macronutrient. Um, obviously, each macronutrient contains different amounts of calories. So protein, you've got four calories. Carbs, you've got four calories. Fats, you've got nine calories. So cal- calories and fats are much more dense. Now, this would support most people going, you know, for example, I don't know how much you want me to goose certain methods, but say if someone's doing, you know, Slimming World, you know, th- th- a lot of the method that and the, and the methodology that what they're going with is going to be stripping out fats because obviously yeah. they're highly dense in calories. And it does make sense because obviously you're going to push yourself into a deficit. However, there's a sustainability and the demonization of foods by doing that. And actually, again, on hormonal status, right, it's not going to, it's not going to last. It's not going to last and it's not going to end in a good It moment. creates bad relationships with food. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, and when you start demonizing foods and think, oh, well, I can't eat an avocado because it's, you know, it's fucking 240 <laughs> calories. It's like, yeah, but hang on a minute. And that's where we need to start thinking about macronutrients. The best diets and what I found the most success with the majority of my clients, not all my clients, the majority of my clients, and I'm talking 90 plus percent. So that's a lot of people, you know, that's a lot of people, is not stripping out any of the macronutrients. Mm-hmm. Like you strip out carbohydrates. And I know people have had results from that and people can get results from that but can you stick to it long-term? And also it's still not the best way of getting results. Like carbohydrates are still our main energy source for your body and your brain. Mm. So you still need carbohydrates in there. It's the quality of carbs. When you start talking about simple and complex, again, we can go on a massive tangent about that, that you want to be fueling and and focusing on what, what, what carbohydrate you're taking on board for your goals. However, no macronutrient should be restricted. Like your fats should never be restricted. Don't get me wrong. Again, we've got different a range and spectrum of quality of fats so if you're stripping out fats just because they're high in calories you're going to end up with with issues hormonally you're going to end up with issues you know with training with with all sorts of, of different areas um with your skin with with all these things you know and and that, that's what people get sort of oh i've dropped my carbs but then again a lot of people think they've dropped carbs but then they don't actually drop carbs. <laughs> yeah, yeah i've dropped carbs and you sat there eating a banana i'm like <laughs> what that's carbs Oh, you meant you meant you've dropped the shit. You mean you've stopped eating Domino's pizza? That's not dropping carbs. That's just dropping the shit that you were eating. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> that's why you're getting results. It's so, so true. Rather mate. than going, yeah, I'm on no, I'm on the no carb yeah. diet, and he's, yeah. and he's putting no, milk in his yeah. shake. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. like, well, milk's more carbs than protein. You do know that, don't you? Oh, oh, no, nah, no, nah. no. I meant, yeah, I'm, I'm not, I'm not boozing on Saturdays. Right, that's why we're getting results. <laughs> you haven't dropped carbs. Um, what split do you tend to use of, of macronutrients? Yeah, I, I wanted I wanted to ask, and, and just onto that point, because um, one, one of the things that I've always admired about your results is that your your clients not only lose fat, but they always maintain muscle. So I wanted to ask, you've just said that obviously macronutrients, you just don't sort of rule out any, which is great, because I think a balanced diet is really key. But in regard to like protein, do you set parameters? And to Danny's yep. question then, what yep. is the split of protein, fat, and carbs? Okay, so at a base point, initially, before you start working with the client, what I would say is try to go with about a 20 to 25% protein amount of their, of their macronutrient, sorry, of their calorie total. Okay. So, you know, say if they're eating 2,000 calories, you're probably looking at around 100 grams per day. Yeah. Okay, so that's, 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 that's lower than common belief. Yeah, we can always increase it though, but let's go with 20 to 25%. Yeah. Um, I will, I will cover that more so in a second. And then with fats and carbs, what I would tend to go with fats is probably around a, um, a 30%, 25 to 30%, and with carbs around a 45%, okay? This should allow people to still have flexibility in there, massive flexibility. Um, they're still gonna get great results from doing that if the quality of carbohydrates are there. However, when people start to train more frequently, the need for more carbohydrates is there because obviously they're training five, six, seven times a week, twice a day. Like you need more carbohydrates, but you also need more protein, but you also don't want to drop your fats probably lower than 20% because that's going to support hormonal side, the side of things. So what I tend to do is with those sort of clients is, is probably go with the 25 to 30%. And don't get me wrong. If you're going over that and you're still hitting say 20% on your, on your fats, then the carbohydrates and you feel fine, then, then, then that's fine to implement. However, we go on a, if you're training more frequently, then your protein needs to go up. Because especially if you're in a deficit, you're going to be you're putting more emphasis 
on that as an energy source and, and, and delving into lean tissue stores. So you want to protect it as much as you can. So the higher the protein, the better if you're training more frequently. There's no point in us talking to about macronutrient splits if someone's not training though. Like, let's just get your calories right. Let's get the quality of food right. The macronutrients tend to take care of themselves if you're not training that frequently. And then as you start to train more frequently, we talk, start talk, talking about the pyramid again, then you're training more frequently now. Now we can address this. Now we can go, right, okay, what's your protein at? That's a, that's a second question I ask, first of all. Like, get the calories right first. Right, okay, you're training three, four times a week. Right, let's have a look at his protein. What protein is he taking on board? Oh, he's only taking on 90 grams a day and he's training four times a week in the gym, you know, and he's in quite a large deficit. He's losing weight. We need to push that up. That's going to maintain the muscle mass whilst they're going through that dieting phase. Um, and in regards to macronutrient split on a fat and carb level as well, what I always say to people as well is, is down to preference as well. Mm. So if you prefer smaller meals that are higher in fat, go for that. If you prefer more satiating meals with lower fat, go for that. However, don't strip one of the macronutrients out completely. Mm. But if you are training more frequently, I would lean towards a higher carbohydrate. But when we talk about deficits and stuff, they're still on pretty low carbs. Even if their carbs are at 45%, if you're, if you're on 2000 calories, that's still lower carbs than what you've been eating. <laughs> That's still lower carbs than what you've been eating. Trust me. Just because your percentages may have changed. Oh yeah, I was only eating 30. Yeah, but Domino's pizzas also are high in fats. You know, your ice creams that you're having every day is high in fats. That's why your fats were through the roof. Oh, my carbs have only ever been 40%. Yes, but now we're actually in a deficit and we're eating better quality foods. Like you'll get world-class, you know, if you, if you can get your carbs between 40 and 50, that team seems to be the best range for me, for a lot of clients that, you know, that are training reasonable amount, mm -hmm. then that seems to be the, the a good base point. Protein, I would say minimum, absolute minimum 20%. If you're training more frequently, start to up it. And fat, absolute minimum 20% as well. <laughs>